I wanted to talk about the cap M or the capital asset pricing model again today. I specifically want to talk about the security market line. If you recall from my last video, which you can check out if you follow this link here, it's all about risk and return. So the higher the risk, the more returns investors demand for taking on that risk, but it's not any old risk that matters. It's beta. So beta is this systematic, undiversifiable risk. That's what matters in the context of cap M. If you recall, the formula for cap M says that the expected return for an asset is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta times the market risk premium, which is the expected return for the market minus the risk-free rate. Now, this is a line. So what we can do is we can graph this line. If we do that, we get something like this. You'll notice that uh, the y-axis is the expected return. Uh, you'll also notice here that the risk-free rate is the intercept of this line because the beta of the risk-free rate is zero. Uh, you will see that beta is the term for the x-axis. And you'll see here that this quantity, the uh, expected return for the market minus the uh, risk-free rate is the market risk premium. It also determines the slope of this line, right? So you can see here, if you can visualize as you lower the risk-free rate, then that slope of the line steepens. And as you increase the expected return for the market, the slope of the line also would increase. Uh, now, by definition, the market portfolio has a beta of one. We can see that here. So here's the two points on the line that are important, the risk-free rate intercept and the market portfolio there. Uh, we also could see that if an asset was on that line with a low beta, then it, it ha would have lower expected returns than the market. We could also see that if a portfolio on that line had a higher beta, then it would have higher expected returns than the market. Now, this is if the market has priced everything correctly, uh, that may or may not be the case. So we can think about this asset here where it has high expected returns given its beta, therefore it must be an undervalued asset versus its fair value. We can see another asset here where it has expected returns that are too low given its beta, so it must be an overvalued asset. All right, now it's interesting to keep in mind that this doesn't really tell us that much about efficiency from a sharp ratio standpoint. The problem here is that sharp ratio uses standard deviation and not beta. Uh, so we see some interesting things here. And it's also interesting to note that the sharp ratio is not going to be the same for every asset on that line, unlike the capital market line. I'm not going to go into the math here today. In fact, maybe next time we'll talk about the capital market line, how that differs from the security market line. Uh, I'm Brian Kozlowski. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for listening.